Okay, as you can see here, I've got the board laid out. Um, and this is just pretty much how it's come uh, stock from the factory. What I need to do next is look at how I'm going to configure this. And what I'm going to do to figure that out is basically go online and check out the uh, manual as well as the uh, GitHub for the printer, a sample printer config. All right, there are two resources that I'm going to recommend to look at. One of them is the manual. As, as of the time of this video, there's only a V1 manual that I can find. Both of these are going to be on the GitHub for Big Tree Tech. The other resource is going to be, if you're setting up Clipper, which I am, is going to be a sample, um, a generic Big Tree Tech Octopus.cfg. So this gives us some clues as to how um, they recommend setting it up in Clipper. Okay, so based on the printer config, I'm going to be using motor 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, which is going to be my X, Y, Z, and then E. So based on the manual, I'm if I want to run UART mode, which is how the printer config uh, recommends it being run, I'm going to need to remove all but the second jumper for the stepper motors that I'm going to be using. And uh, if you don't have a nice jumper removal tool, you can use a pair of tweezers with some pointy tips, which is what I use. Everybody's got a different technique, but I'll show you how I do mine. These are kind of tricky, but basically you're going to get that um, tip behind the jumper and then use the other side of your finger to lift it out. It does help having fingernails. This process isn't too hard, but it's, it's just a little time consuming but that process works for me. In the manual, just uh, again, to double check, make sure that your jumpers are configured for UART mode. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is install these stepper drivers. Um, you can see I bought a box of five of them, which should be more than enough. I also have these heat sinks I'm gonna add on just to help keep them cool, which will go right on top of that chip right there that you can kind of see. Now these can only really go in one way. You can see at least the, the big tree tech version of them, which is what these are, so. Uh, you can see the red pins and the black, and they, they just line up accordingly. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these in. And just make sure they press in all the way. Something else to be aware of as you're configuring this is that uh, if you want to use the stall guard feature of your 2209s, meaning you want to do uh, sensorless homing, so no end stops, then you would want to jumper these pins here. Otherwise, um, that, that feature is not going to work based on what the manual says. So I'm going to be using optical end stops, so I'm going to just leave it as is. But that may be something you have to work through on your, your particular setup. One other thing to check would be your jumpers down here for your fans. So uh, this is set to 24 volts. Otherwise, if you can jumper up here if you want 5 volt, you can jumper in the middle if you have 12 volt fans. I do like that there's uh, features that allow you to change the voltage for your fans. And last but certainly not least is installing the heat sinks, which I'm going to basically remove the little tape here. And then um, I'm going to try to orient it where it's, the length goes this way and put it right on top of this um, little gold there that you see. So I'll just rinse and repeat for the next three. Okay, and I've got all, all four of the heat sinks on, so I'm pretty much good to go at this point. Okay, here you can see that I went ahead and uh, designed a little outline piece that will allow me to mount the octopus board, and then I'll be able to then tape that or glue that to the back of my enclosure um, for, my, for the printer that I'm going to install this on. It would be possible to tape this directly, but you can see... You know, with the way the pins are, um, it's just not not going to be as clean and good as a fit. Plus, that will give me a little bit of an air gap between the uh, enclosure and the board. See here, I went ahead and put some tape on the top because these aren't labeled and it's going to be harder to see from the bottom after I get it mounted. So I've got you've got your motor input, power input, negative and positive. Your regular power input, negative and positive. Your bed power input, negative and positive, and your bed output positive and negative. If you're doing an upgrade, you may want to take a look at your existing configurations like your motor current, um, if you have stealth chop enabled or not on your drivers, and then also what your steps are per millimeter. A lot of this is going to carry over to the clipper or to the new board. Okay, this is the machine I'm going to be upgrading. 
It was originally a Hypercube Evolution, and now it's a uh, Core XY with um, rails. So still using some of the original Evolution parts. Okay, now I'm doing the upgrade. <clears throat> you can see that I have these wires that um, are going to need to be crimped, and they're going to go to the power in. So right now I only have <clears throat> one set of 24 volt leads coming off the power supply for the power. In order to do this part, I'm going to use these ring terminals that will fit nicely here. And uh, I'm just going to do one for the black and the red. And I'm going to use this crimper. It's a Titan crimper. I've also got this to strip the wire. This is pretty handy. So I'll go ahead and strip the wire a little bit. Probably about that long. I'm going to go ahead and crimp. So I'll insert that through. You're going to want a little tiny bit of the wire, just visible so you can do the wiggle tuck. And then use your, if you have a crimper like these, you're going to use the blue. I'll insert it in. And that's good, holding real nice. And then I'll just repeat the process for the black one. Okay, one of the things I didn't go ahead and do, you can see here, is um, after looking into it, I do need to power the motor separately. I went ahead and ran um, ran the inputs here to the power supply. Okay, last thing, I've got everything just about connected. One thing that I did is um, I'm running an AC bed, as you can see, I've got an SSR here. So there is a bed input, a positive and negative, you can see here. What I'm, what I'm doing is just running in parallel from the power positive and negative to the bed input, which is positive and negative. So there's just gonna be a small amount of voltage that's needed to trigger the SSR. So um, normally, if you're gonna be powering and you have a DC bed, you're gonna to wanna to use thicker gauge and run it directly to your power supply. But this will work if you're running an AC bed. You can go powering up, just make sure that you check all the polarity, especially on the input here, as well as anything you connected on your power supply. You can see here, these are the headers for the end stops. There's um, eight of them actually, so I'm gonna use these first three for X, Y, and Z. I just went ahead and crimped on some connectors um, so that I can do my optical end stop wiring, and I use these PA09 crimpers to do that. Basically, here's how I do it. I hold this uh, crimper with the uh, <coughs> little piece in here, and I use, I just took it off this. So you're gonna use that. That's what's going to hold the wire, and then you're basically just going to insert enough of the wire in here. You might have to twist it around and keep it to keep it clean. Right up to the jacket, you're going to press down, and then gently remove it. Do the wiggle test, make sure it doesn't move anywhere, and then simply place the part that's going to hit the wire, the sheath on the wire and the second, the larger spot on the crimper, and then do the same thing, repeat the process. So now the jacket should be crimped, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, here is a picture of a wiring diagram, just so you can see everything that I ended up connecting. I'm not gonna show a video of connecting everything because most of the things like the fans and uh, thermistors are pretty self-explanatory. You just have to, to know where they go, in my case, I was able to upgrade directly and just plug in what I had in those spots.